Okay, so once you've got to this equation, you can then rearrange it and you can find the diameter of the nucleus. Um, typical value for n, number of layers, is about 10,000. I mean, and that's still a really, really thin piece of um, gold foil. Plugging that into the equation, you get this, okay, and then taking out the square roots, you end up with d, little d, diameter of the um, nucleus is equal to the diameter of the atom divided by 10,000. You can use it in this form, but if you have, that's if you've got 10 to the 4 layers. So basically you use it in this form um, and figure out the number of layers. There's a question on this um, in, the, um, in the questions on the page. So you can uh, have a go at using that there. The other uh, um, approach to figuring out with the diameter of a um, nucleus is using this idea called closest approach. Now, you can do this if you want, but if you want to leave it, you can because you haven't done um, gravitational fields. So there's an equation in here that you come across in gravitational fields. I'll explain it and explain what all the terms mean, and it's fairly straightforward to use. It's just that um, it's question four on the questions on this page. So if you want to leave that, you can. If you want to have a go at it, you're more than welcome to. So the closest approach is the closest point of particle alpha can get to the nucleus of an atom, which I have um, shown you in the diagram before on the previous slide. It's where all the initial kinetic energy has been converted into electrical potential energy. So as the positive um, nucleus of the alpha comes towards the positive nucleus of the atom, okay, they start to repel each other. And so as it's coming closer, all of its kinetic energy is being turned into electrical potential energy, trying to force the two together. But there'll be a point where they can't get any closer. Okay. That expressed in equation form is kinetic energy is being converted into potential energy. And at the point just where the alpha particle stops, the alpha nucleus stops, all of its initial kinetic energy has been converted into potential energy, and it will then go back again. So those two equals reserves. So when all the kinetic energy is turned into gravitational, uh, sorry, electrical potential energy. Now you can calculate how much energy that is using this equation, which you won't have seen before, but it's quite easy to um, go through. Q1 is the charge on particle 1. So if you think about it, that would be the alpha particle. It has two protons, which have charge. So Q1 would be 2 times the charge in a proton, which is the same as the charge in an electron. Q2 would be the charge on the gold nucleus. Okay, gold has 79 um, protons, so it would be 79 times the charge of a proton, which is the same as the charge of an electron. Divided by 4, which is a constant, pi, which is a constant, and then this, this number here is epsilon naught. Now, epsilon naught is... Um, it's called the permittivity of free space. It's just a constant. It's uh, 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12. Okay. And then you've got R. Now this R would represent, therefore, the radius of the nucleus. Okay. What is the closest approach when the initial kinetic energy of an alpha particle is 6 mega electron volts? I'm going to show you how to use this equation to figure this out. So here's some more detail. We've got heat, EK is the kinetic energy, EP is the electrical potential energy, and again here's the charges, and then this R is the closest approach distance. And this is the values for the information on gold. So you want 79 because that's the number of protons, which is the thing with the charge. You don't need the top number, the mass number, because neutrons don't have any charge, so they're not affected by this. So let's have a look at how we would work this out. I've got my equation here, I've got my question here. Number one, kinetic energy is in mega electron volts. So I need to convert that to joules first, which we did in particles. So mega electron volts is 6 times 10 to the 6. So we've got 6 times 10 to the 6 times the charge of an electron, which is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. Multiply them together, get my answer in joules. Okay, number two, 
Here's my equation. I want R, so I need to make R the subject. So I rearrange it for R. I've put EK here and EP. I should have used the same thing, but they're the same number. It's this number here that you've just figured out, okay? Substitute in there. So let's substitute the values in. Q1, I've used the gold. So we've got 79 protons times the charge of an electron because that is the same as the charge of a proton. Times Q2, which is the alpha. So we've got two protons there times the charge of the electron. Four pi and epsilon naught are um, constants. Remember, epsilon naught is 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12. And then I need to substitute in the energy, which I've calculated here. Substitute in, rearrange, I get 3.8 times 10 to the 4 minus 14. So that gives me a really good idea of the size of a nucleus, okay? The closest approach method. Now, I've set you some questions to do. There are four questions on that page, 26.1. The last one is the closest, of, uh, 4C is the closest approach method. So you need to use this method. Um, it's gold, it's just that it's changed the kinetic energy. So you should be able to follow it through fine. In question 4B, it's asking you to do the um, probability method. So it wants you to use this equation here but you don't know n, it tells you um, the diameter of the atoms, which is big D, but it also tells you the thickness of the foil. So if you divide the thickness of the foil, which is 10 micrometers, by the, by the diameter of the um, atoms, it should tell you how many atoms there are, so how many layers there are. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, so have a good go and see how you get on, and then we can mark them next time and you can uh, come back to me with any questions. If you want me to go through any of this information with you in person, let me know and we can organise a um, Google Meet. Okay, thank you. Bye.